Good evening, everyone. We are glad that you have chosen to be with us once again. Uh, this is the first Wednesday in June, and we are just happy to have you with us, happy to have this kind of communication to be able to share with one another and to continue our weekday night Bible study as we have been doing so. We have been in Second Kings, and we will get to that shortly. But the first thing I want to do is... As always, pray for our missionaries. Now, uh, I haven't got the names to read tonight, so we'll just have to trust that the Lord knows what those names are. And knowing that he will give to them what they need. But for those on mission, we always need to take the time to lift them up for Olive and Stanford's daughter and uh, son-in-law and then Barbara and Jean's granddaughter and grandson-in-law for them that are on the front line. Uh, because they are in missions directly. But we all need to be in missions. We all need to be thinking about sharing the love of Jesus wherever we go and wherever we do. So uh, I want to pray as well for those Middle Eastern countries uh, where uh, Islam is king and that they might have their eyes open to be able to see that the one true king, his name is Jesus. And then pray for China and for this virus and how it has affected us, how it has affected the world. And it might be one of the great witnessing tools because for people who are fearful, they simply need to trust Jesus for it all. And then we pray for North Korea, South Korea, and China in that little triangle for the voices of the martyrs as they work and how they share those things, uh, the message of Jesus, but the different modes of communication that they use because they send things into North Korea over the line by GPS. They know what has transpired and uh, where those things have arrived. And so the message uh, today is carried in so many diverse ways, but we just need to know that missions are a very important part of what we pray for and what we gather for on Wednesday night. So if you would gather your hearts together with me, you may know others that are on the mission field that we need to pray for. And as always, I'm going to stop just a moment before I begin and ask you to bring those to your mind that you might ask God to simply give to them all that they can receive. Would you bow your heads with me in prayer, please? Lord Jesus, we come once again seeking to share the word, the gospel of truth, that Jesus came and lived and died and was resurrected on the third day, and that we might have life because we have trusted him. So as we pray for missions tonight, as missionaries that are on the field that have birthdays, first on the International Mission Board and then from the North American Mission Board, that you might touch those and just fill them with all that they can take of what you can pour out. And then for the, the people for whom they speak to, that you would prepare the way for. You know who they are. You know the message that will be given to them. You know the problems that uh, the evil one will place in the way. But help us to know that uh, no matter who else they are, there is none like you in all the world. There is no God like you, and there is no Savior like Jesus. And the whole world needs to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, because that is truly what we are about. So I pray that you might give to them those things, and then for those others that we have listed for the, uh, the blessings that they need. I think once again, as I pray now for, for my friend Buck, who works at the GBC, and I know the difficulties that he has faced sometimes. First, he was a missionary to Russia, and now he's back and working at uh, the GBC. And I just, from talking to him, know the difficulties. You just placed him in my mind. I pray that you might place others in the minds of those that are listening tonight. That they might come to a point where they can say, Oh, I need to pray for them. The Lord is moving upon me to do that. Touch them, Lord, in this way. And Help them to know that uh, the prompting comes from you, and there is none other like you. And so with all of that said, then let me take a moment and, and pray for George Ford and, and his family and for 
the pain that has been brought to his family by the police department, but then what has uh, occurred since then. I just know that, that it's so difficult when there's so much pain and so much hurt. I just pray for our cities tonight that, that struggle so and for the violence that breaks out and for the Floyd family and how they've asked for that not to occur. Help us to remember that, that the people of God have a responsibility here, and that is to lift them all up, that you might touch them for the restraining power of the Holy Spirit to work. Because one of the roles that he has is to restrain evil. I pray for a loosing of him in all of these places for which you know that difficulty ensues and help some, however many it may be, come to know you because of this. Jesus, there is none like you. And how wonderful it is that you claim us as your very own. And when you claim us as your very own, you promise never to leave nor forsake us. We are claiming that promise tonight. Help us in this matter. Help us in the matter of prayer. Romans 8, 26 tells us that, that when we know not what to pray, the Spirit prays for us. He gives utterances that speak the, the words that need to come from our spirits to the Almighty God. Touch us this way tonight, Lord Jesus. And thank you for caring for us. For the Almighty God, who has given to us everything, Help us to be grateful for all that has been given to us. And help us to never shirk a task that says gratefulness comes because we understand one who he is, two how great he is, and three the gifts that have been given to us. Help us to be grateful, Lord Jesus, and give us now our time of study as we begin that tonight. Thank you once again. In your precious name we do pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me in that. And we're in Second Kings still, verses, I mean, chapter 12. Tonight we're going to do verses 9 and 10a. I stopped at 10a because of uh, what it says, and I'll read it in just a minute. But uh, I've entitled this message a chestful. And that's one of the things that comes out in verse 9, the way they're going to collect the money and will be in this chest. But to know that the power of God is at work in the nation of Judah. And in this difficult uh, time that, that has preceded them and uh, the damages that have come to the temple. Uh, so because of all of those and then revival occurred when Joash was placed on the throne. It's because Jehoda was following the Lord. And Jehoda knew the un importance of placing the Lord first. Let me stop before I ever read to you. Do you understand the importance of placing him first? Because he's not second. He's not third. Because if he is those things, then there are idols that are above him. And those idols that are above him are the very things that brought Judah and Israel to its knees because they forgot the God who gave to them everything they have. Keep in mind also the two points of origin and history as we study this, because in the very beginning, the origins of the nation of Israel was a theocracy. They were governed by God. And so uh, when that time came that they wanted a king because they wanted other nations to be like other nations, then sometimes those kings led them astray. And when those kings led them astray, then they would fall into uh, difficult times. And those difficult times, they would find believers, people who were righteous, who would just cry out, God, hear our prayer. We need to have those kind of people in our country today, in our church today, all over the world, crying out for God to do what he will, but for him to bless us. Because nobody can do what he can do. Tonight, as we begin, we're going to be looking in, uh, again, 2 Kings chapter 12, and I'm going to begin with verse 9, and I'll read uh, all of verse 9 before I begin to break that out. It says, uh, But Jehoda the priest took a chest and bored a hole in its lid 
and put it beside the altar on the right side as one comes into the house of the Lord. And the priest who guarded the threshold put in all of the money which was brought into the house of the Lord. Now, when I talk about this first point, I, I, I use the word alteration. Now, alteration can, can be a lots of things. It can be that you, you have clothes altered because the alterations are made to make them fit better. In this particular case, there was a change that needed to be. Now, remember that Jehovah in the past had already told the kingdom of Judah that they needed to collect the money and they needed to take it in and repair the temple. And for whatever reason, they had not done it. It doesn't say that any money was misplaced. It doesn't say anything like that. It just said that it was not done. And, and in verse 8, it said the priest said that, that they would do that, but they would not take the money that had been spent before and apply them. And where I closed the last message was the word impasse. You know, we're at an impasse now. We're at an impasse in our country where... Uh, we're having so many difficult problems now that, that are caused by sin. But sometimes we are at an impasse with God because we are not willing to humble ourselves and do what he wants us to do. They were at the impasse because the priests were saying, we've done this in the past, but we're not doing it now. An impasse. Where are you? Are you at an impasse with God? Are you willing to humble yourself and let him do with you whatever he wants to do? That's a difficult concept to be able to absorb. To let God do with you whatever he wants to do. Even the priests at this time were not willing to do that because they said, well, we understand what you want to do, verse 8, but we're not going to do that. We're not going to take the money and do that. So Jehovah, once again, I mean, through the, the king, the king once again issued uh, the decree that the temple needs to be repaired. And so Jehoda, under the king's leadership, took a chest, and that's what he said. So I, I entitled that point alteration because all of a sudden something wasn't working, and they tried something else. They tried something else because the king said, this is what needs to be, and then the priest through spiritual leadership said, this is the way we're going to do it. So in 9 it says, But Jehovah the priest took a chest and bored a hole in its lid and put it beside the altar. Remember that I entitled this point alterations. That's A-L-T-E-R. Here we're talking about put the chest beside the altar. That's A-L-T-A-R. An altar is a place of worship. And said he put it beside the altar on the right side as one comes into the house of the Lord. So it was placed there because the monies would go into it. There weren't going to be any questions about what the money was going to be used for. It was going to be used for the reparation of the temple. But he put it on the right side of the altar. To me, that just speaks so loudly and so clearly because what is it like to come into the presence of God? And the altar represents the presence of God. And so what, what, what the people are doing is they're bringing those things in. They are bringing them in, and they're putting them in that, but they're putting them in that as they move to the point to be into the presence of God. Now, simply put, when was the last time you entered into the presence of God? Because that's what's having to occur. And if you don't think that will change you, you have another thought coming. The presence of the Almighty God is so powerful. It is so, so great. I cannot begin to come up with the words that would, the adjectives that would describe that. Coming into the presence of God, do you not think that God would move in your spirit when you came into his presence? So there was a whole board in the in the chest. Part of the reason I entitled this message, what I do, is a chest full. Because as the hole was bored, the money was brought in. Remember from one of the previous lessons, coins had not entered into the exchange system yet. So they would be bringing in sacks of silver or gold or other ores, other kinds of metal that would be used 